Hey, I'm Callie Lewis. You're watching Geek Brief TV. This is Brief 411. It's Innovation Week on GBTV. For my whole life, I've interacted with computers the same way. The keyboard and mouse combo has served technology well, but there's a limit on how quickly we can interact with machines when we're using a keyboard and a mouse. As processing power grows, our computers can handle smarter, more intuitive input. HID stands for Human Interface Device, or Human Interface Design. It's also referred to as HIT, which stands for Human Interface Technology. It's one of the most exciting areas of tech research because it's moving us away from the artificiality of the keyboard and mouse into interaction that's more elegant and organic. HID research has been going on for years, but it really captured popular imagination in 2002 when Tom Cruise started moving images around using his hands in the Movie Minority Report. After that movie, my mouse started feeling like a pretty primitive tool in my hand. In August 2006, TED Talks publicly released a video recorded in February 2006 featuring Jeff Hahn's multi-touch table. We covered it on brief number 55 after hearing Adam Curry talk about it on Daily Source Code. I don't know what it was like for you guys, but for me it was one of those historically significant days I'll never forget. Here we are two years later though. We have multi-touch on iPhones and the Microsoft Surface, but what's next? HID research includes speech recognition, motion recognition, things like eye tracking, and the ultimate brain control. Speech recognition is a massive challenge and I get frustrated with the slow pace of progress every time I call customer service. Recognition can be pretty good in a system where a user is willing to sit down and train an application to understand, but few people are willing to take the time to do that. The goal is a system smart enough to understand the massive variety of accents and speech patterns it'll encounter. Even when all the technical issues with speech recognition have long been solved though, it isn't an ideal solution because it's noisy. Imagine an office filled with cubicles with every person talking to a computer. We're going to see a lot more happen with multi-touch, but based on what I'm seeing, AirTouch seems easier to bring to market. AirTouch technology just depends on writing the right software to take advantage of a webcam to use it as an input device. If you have a webcam, you can see it in action at hrp.com, but I have to warn you, navigating a website with a swipe of your hand is addictive. Small companies like Camtrax Technologies are taking on the challenge to give gamers control over any Windows-based game using a webcam. Multi-touch screens require additional hardware, but a multi-touch camera setup doesn't, except for the fact that multiple cameras and sensors would result in increased accuracy. The ultimate goal in human interface design, at least as far as I'm concerned, has to be the ability to control a computer with your brain. We want to be able to think the words and make them appear in a document. We want to be able to think about a photo and have it pop up on the screen. We've talked about the Emotive Epic headset for gaming. It's scheduled to launch later this year for under $300, and it gives gamers thought control over what's happening on the screen. Take a look. Emotive is a neuroengineering company. We have developed a brain-computer interface that utterly transforms the way in which humans can interact with machines. Until this point in time, the way that we interact with machines has always been in a very conscious or direct form. So whether it's something as simple as turning on the light with a switch or as complex as programming a piece of software, we've always had to give a command to a machine or a series of commands for it to do anything for us. So what we do at Emotive is we create technologies that allow us to tap directly into the brain, which is really your center for control and experience, and we allow machines to understand not only your conscious thoughts, but also your facial expressions and emotions. It's completely wireless, it has a battery life that will support 12 hours of continuous play, and lastly, we've also incorporated a gyroscope into the Epoch that will allow us to track head motion. Uh, we're also able to control camera movement and cursor control. Your music will be able to vary based on your emotional experience. Your, your photos will actually change and reorganize itself based on what you feel. I could go on for an hour talking about more serious HID research. There's stuff being developed to help people with disabilities, stuff being developed to help burn patients deal with pain. It's really amazing, but we'll save all that for the big trip. And for now, keep the brief and geek brief. 
My promo codes GB1, GB2, and GB3 now work for .ca Canadian domains. True, strong, and free. And of course, it works with .coms, .nets, and .tvs, just not .mes. I'm Callie Lewis. Thanks for watching. I keep. Bye. Bye. <laughs> hmm?